Every time you walk in a store, you walk out with fewer items and yes, a bigger bill, but you can change this, yep, even in 2023. Have you guys noticed it too? What cost you a dollar 24 months ago is now $2. It's really challenging to figure out how to be able to buy the same amount of items without spending more. And without sacrificing on either quantity or quality, but frugal people, we possess a unique set of skills. They're like ninja skills <laughs> that will help you to be able to save money even in 2023. And that's what this video is all about. In this video, we will delve into strategies that we use for paying less, even in the face of rising prices. If you don't know us, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median, where every week we give you videos on practical frugality. Strategy number one, we evaluate the benefits before buying. It's like the BBB, benefits <laughs> before buying. What that means is we look at what will this actually do for us? Do we need this product? Do we need it now? How long will it last? And is the price equivalent to the quality? We also look at what is the cost per use. We like to think of this in terms of our ROI. If we buy this product, how long is it going to take us to actually sort of pay ourselves back for having purchased that product? So for instance, if the product is $50 and we're gonna save a little bit of money every month because we're now using that product, how long is it gonna take before we recoup that 50 bucks? As you know, Hope and I budget and we watch prices very carefully. We watch what's coming in and what's going out. And right now we have an eagle eye on it more than ever. We look at weekly goals, monthly goals, quarterly goals. We look at them very carefully and we spend time together discussing what's been done, how it's working and what we can do differently to improve it. And all of those lists, by the way, I know I've talked about this like a kajillion, which is a real word, a kajillion times on this channel, but I will say it again. All of those lists of goals are prioritized. So the most important things on any list go all the way at the top of that list. Your eye sees it and automatically your brain says, that goal is super important. I need to focus on it. Seldom is an expense unplanned. We do mm. get unplanned emergency expenses every once in a while, car breaks down or something happens unexpectedly. But for the most part, we, we run on a routine of things that we have to buy, pay for, and services that we have to dole out money on. So most of the time we can easily track these. One of the things we also have had like discussions about, tell me if you've had discussions like this in your household, looking ahead and sort of forecasting what are things that we see in the future that we're going to need to replace? Because seldom is an emergency expense really, truly an emergency. There are a lot of things like our washing machine. We had money set aside for a new washing machine for a long time. We knew it was going down. Time. It was like it was showing the signs. It was yeah. not good. We'd repaired it a couple of times. Our friend who was repairman was like, don't do this again. So we knew we were running on the ragged edge of that thing going <laughs> boom and never working again. So really that kind of an expense no longer became an emergency because we had looked ahead and said, we're gonna to need to replace that. Let's save up the money and make sure that we've already done a little bit of research on the make and model we want and how much money we're gonna need so we're all ready for it. Adding to this, we budget our needs, not our wants. Mm -hmm. We prioritize what we're actually gonna need. And then if we have money left over, we might look at some of those wants. It's not like we deny ourselves things no, that we, we like to buy. We do purchase things that are fun and enjoyable. We create a realistic budget and stick to it. Larry mentioned my favorite word again, prioritize, because even all of the items in your budget should be prioritized. And he said it, prioritizing your needs over your wants, super important. We ensure that our money is allocated wisely and that mm. there aren't any unnecessary expenses within that budget. The third thing that frugal people do really, really well when it comes to prices going up, that is we know how to look for bargains and sales and use coupons. You know, my brother-in-law taught me when I was in high school without even teaching me, he was just explaining what he was doing, but he drilled it into me how important 
important it is to look for the lowest prices on a brand new item. He would go to three or four different stores. He would look at what was on sale and then he would buy something and save sometimes 50% on the cost of that item. And he would come over and tell us how he had done it. And I was really intrigued by this. So Hope and I try to implement that same strategy into our daily lives. Yeah, doing that comparison shopping, always super important. Knowing the sales cycles may be equally important because there are certain times of the year when certain types of items tend to go on sale. We're also not afraid to ask and look for a discount and we love it when we have an <laughs> app or something that is gonna help us to find coupons, save money, or get cash back. We actually have a couple of them that we are super duper fond of. Uh, Honey is one of them and Rakuten is the other. We're gonna make sure that if you don't use them, we really like them. They'll be listed in the description of this video for you. Now, if you're sort of curious about how we find discounts while shopping retail, we just literally did a two-part series on it. And we went through 40 different ways that we have found to pay less than that price that is on the price tag and to save lots and lots of money when shopping retail. I put that in a playlist for you, so I'll make sure that that two-part series is listed up above, and I'll also put it in the description of this video for you. DIY and repurposing are two more things that you can do. Now, everybody mm -hmm. knows DIY is do it yourself. Mm -hmm. You can save so much money by going onto YouTube, watching yes. a video on how to do something rather than paying an expert to do it for you. If it's over your head and you know it, that might be a good time to decide to have somebody else do it. But if it's within your skill set, it is so money saving to do it yourself. And repurposing an item would be just yeah. simply taking an item that maybe doesn't work the way it used to and using it to do something else. I did this a lot in my earlier years. Larry mentioned knowing when you've kind of reached your own limitations and looking for an expert. You should always, by the way, get two or three different estimates before you go with an expert to fix something for you. Because oftentimes you'll be able to look around and find someone who will do it for less money and still do an amazing job. We have a handyman that comes over and does stuff for us when we've kind of reached the limit of yeah. what we know how to do. Uh, the other thing, just sort of in, in line with this DIY sort of idea, we love making homemade gifts for people, putting gift baskets together, that sort of thing. And you can do it very, very inexpensively. And these look like high class gifts that you paid buku bucks for, but you've put them together for just a fraction of that cost. Meal planning and cooking at home can mm -hmm. save you so much money <laughs> and Hope is really good at doing this. We've talked about this before on the channel like a lot. The average American family of four spends in excess of $3,000 a year eating out. And we would dare say that although we've looked up those statistics many times, it's probably honestly higher than that. Eating out can eat up your budget really, really quickly. Developing the skills that it takes to cook food at home and to plan it will save you literally thousands of dollars a year. Yeah, I was just thinking of what $3,000 would get down to in a month. Mm -hmm. And roughly, it'd be just a little bit less than $300 a month. Mm -hmm. So that is a realistic, kind of a low figure. The example that Larry just gave, sort of breaking down that $3,000 a year, because when you hear $3,000 a year to eat out, you're like, wow, that's a lot of money. But when he said, that's a little under $300 a month, I'm willing to bet that some of you went, well, that's not so bad. And that's one of the things that we've talked about a lot is the fact that you have to do the math. Mm -hmm. You can't look at what you're spending on a weekly or even a monthly basis on some things. You have to extrapolate those figures out to a yearly amount. Then that's when the light bulb goes on and you decide, do we wanna continue paying for this or do we not? Think of what that money could be used mm -hmm. for when you're talking about $3,000 on eating out. That would go long toward purchasing yeah. a new car. I mean, it's just amazing the amount of money that we can 
prif away on things like eating out. When it comes to grocery shopping, it comes to menu planning, that sort of thing, there are so many different strategies that you can employ that will help you to lower those costs. And believe me, we are spending less on groceries for our family in 2023 than we did in 2022. So these strategies really, really do work. If you're liking the content of this video and you're getting some good out of it, if we're helping you, give us a like. It really helps out with the algorithms on YouTube. And if you're not subscribed to us, we would love for you to become part of our frugal family. So subscribe. Here's an area that threw a whole lot of people for a loop in the last 24 months, and that is the price of your utility bill. The cost overall of electricity doubled in 2022. Now, despite the fact that it doubled, our utility bills went up an average of about 35% last year as opposed to 50% or even above that in 2022. One of the things that we have really been working on together is really embracing this whole idea of energy efficiency. If you'd like a video on this where we go into more detail, we'd be glad to do that. Just mention that in the mm -hmm. comments. Here's a little sneak peek on what Hope and I are doing involving the energy. One of the things that we're doing is we're going online and we're looking at the back end of our usage from our utility company. It shows us in 15 minute increments where the most power draws are happening. Based on those times, we can tell what we were using that was causing the spike. So we're reevaluating how we're using those things. It might be the microwave oven, it might be the toaster oven, mm -hmm. it might be extra lights left on. We can tell, and hopefully you've got a good utility company where you can go online and get this information. It's very valuable. But if you don't, there are so many things that you can do. Tell us in the comments section, are you in the same boat that we are, that the rising cost of your energy bill is really starting to concern you and you are ready to learn more about conserving energy. Another area that Hope and I have been really working at is mm -hmm. reducing gas expenses. And we're talking about driving that kind of gas. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of different things you can do to save money on gas. We actually did a video on that as well, where we talked in more detail about the strategies that we put in place. But just to go over a couple of them, you can use alternative transportation methods. Mm -hmm. One of them, of course, is good old-fashioned walking. We have some stores within a mile of us that we can walk to. We have a bank that's close by. We have a grocery store that we can go by. I can bike and cover some of these things. Mm -hmm. There's different ways. You can ride a bus. Uh, you can carpool with friends if you're going to work and you're all going to the same place. Why not carpool and get it maybe two or three people in a vehicle and saving two thirds of that cost. Lots of different things that you can do to save money on gas. You notice that every single different thing that we're talking about, every single strategy covers a major area of your budget. So that was sort of the goal of this video was to make sure we were hitting the high points of all those areas of your budget, which may or may not be driving you a little bit crazy. And you're thinking, how can I lower this? Another strategy that we've had to put in place, and we, we've kind of been forced to put in place at time, is when a river dries up, you have to look for a new river. Don't just give up. Well, what do we mean by a river? A river is a supply of economical goods that you have found where you can get good prices on, in our case, it was bulk food. We've had that river dry up about three or four different times where the source of supply stopped suddenly and we had to look for alternatives. So look for a river if one of yours has dried up. All the methods we're talking about in this video will allow you to consistently spend less and to save more money every single month. But if you want more tips on this area, remember Larry and I just did a two-part series where we gave you 40 different strategies for paying less when you buy retail. And that series, I got it right over there for you. Take a look. If we survived on my meal planning and cooking skills, we would be dead. Very dead. We'd be dead. Yeah. We'd be dead, Jim. Mm -hmm.